Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Itchy Mysteries. I'm your host, John Lorden. Thanks for joining me today. And I love today's episode because we are talking about a film that you can actually find on YouTube. So anywhere in the world, if you see this review and you want to check this film out, you should be able to jump right over to Richard D. Hall's channel and check it out for yourself. This film is called Didcot Deception. And Didcot is a town in England. And essentially this is about a homicide slash suicide that occurred in 2015. Um, if some of you got a little tickle in your brain when I mentioned Richard D. Hall, he is someone that I've appreciated his work for a while, particularly around the Madeleine McCann case. He has a very good documentary um, where he dives extremely deep into that case. If I remember right, there's one edit of it that is four hours long. There is a ton of information and he does a really good job kind of a very practical approach, um, very logical. Um, I'm pretty sure that fans of Brain Scratch out there would love checking that out. So know that if you do like Didcot Deception, you can also look at his other work. Plus he's doing plenty of stuff on YouTube, um, which I'm really happy to see as well. It's kind of amazing that um, one person, I mean, for Didcot Deception, he researched it, he wrote it, he directed it, he edited it. Um, it's pretty amazing that one person could put out a product like this nowadays, but thanks to YouTube, that is certainly possible. So, um, this, like I said, it, it essentially boils down to this mystery being about a family. You have uh, a mother and father, although it's a stepfather that has moved into a situation with a son that is, I believe he was 21 when this happened, and then they have a daughter that is six. And the family is found dead except the 21-year-old son goes missing. And then within a matter of a few days, they find the son also and he is um, it looks like he has hung himself in a, at a tree out in this kind of open pasture type area. Um, so it's definitely a bit of, of a dark matter to begin with, but what's really interesting about this documentary is Richard asks some very strong questions about the process around how, handle, how cases like that are handled which is very interesting because it doesn't quite go to a full-blown trial. It is kind of done through this method called an inquest where uh, only a few experts, usually people that have worked on the case directly, kind of give their opinion of what they think happened in the case. And then uh, pretty much it's just kind of closed that way. So Richard asks a very strong question in that, did they get it right in this case? Is there something else at play that's going on here? And then he conducts his own investigation. And almost like um, if you're fans of Killing Season, uh, this is kind of similar. Now, uh, please note, this is one guy doing all this. It's on YouTube. So the production level is not going to be as high as something that is you know, co-produced with A&E. Um, but it still has that same vibe. You're essentially following this guy as he's investigating it for himself. He is trying to meet with as many people as he can, collect information from them, shares it with you pretty directly. Um, I did wish that he could have tried to get more of those interviews captured on film. Um, what happens in this typically is he will meet with someone and then he'll get back to his car and he'll kick the camera on right away and tell you what was discussed. But pretty much none of the interviews are actually filmed, which um, I know it can be tricky, particularly when you're treading into certain topics that are sensitive like this. Um, but just know that this is almost, it's almost like a very long form version of Brain Scratch. Um, it, it almost kind of reminded me like of when I went to the uh, Stanley Hotel. You know, it's just, it's, it's a very vlog-ish format. It's a lot of him talking directly to you, but... For me personally, I kind of enjoy that particularly on YouTube, so I think it's kind of a perfect fit uh, to be on YouTube. And what's really interesting about his research is um, he kind of puts together this, this theory by the time you get to the end of it that perhaps this man, this young man, this 21-year-old, did not commit this crime, did not murder his family and go kill himself somewhere else, that maybe it could have been staged in a little bit of an elaborate but pretty reasonable and easy to believe way. 
Um, unfortunately, then Richard takes another step beyond that theory that goes just a little bit too far for me, but um, it goes into several layers of conspiracy theories kind of being added on top of something that I think is actually extremely believable and should be researched more. Um, also, at the beginning of this film, you might note it feels like there is a lot of disclaimers kind of being tossed at you for like the first five minutes or so, um, and including that Richard says that he receives a death threat, and uh, he definitely shows you when that occurs later in the film. Actually, that's one of the few places where he actually got some tape of the conversation literally happening as it happened. Um, in terms of production values, you know, it feels like a YouTube production. It doesn't feel like something quite in the vein of going to Netflix. It would lead, need just a little more polish, you know, um, some better uh, filming done, maybe a little more editing, maybe tighten it down to an hour instead of, I think it runs about an hour and 35 minutes. Um, maybe have some more music added. You know how, how I feel. I always talk about music in terms of telling stories like this. I don't like when music is trying to sway the emotions of the viewer. However, when you have movies or documentaries like this where there's a lot of dialogue going on, I don't think it takes away to have some undercurrent of a little steady tempo or a little steady beat that's going on under there. And for the first hour of this film, there is no music whatsoever. And it probably could have used just a little bit. Like I said, not really to underscore emotions, not really to try to amp up the drama or you know the tragedy that's, that's going on in this, just to give the listener, uh, the viewer, a little something else to kind of hook their mind and, and keep them along for this ride, because it is a lot of talking. It's a lot of Richard talking directly to you. However, if you guys are fans of Brain Scratch, I think you're probably used to that, because I think you know someone that does that to his audience all the time. <laughs> so, um, But worth noting, in the last half hour, Richard does start incorporating some music. I think he does it in a very tasteful way. And um, there's a couple of cool scenes where he tries to figure out things for himself. He puts in these this time doing these little tests that fit into the narratives that some other people have given. It's very, very cool. It's really well done. I think he's a very likable guy. Um, I just, I, you know, I can't really recommend it enough. I think if you're a fan of Brain Scratch, you're probably a very natural fit to at least check out his channel. Um, he also has some shorter videos on this same topic, but this one seems to be the most comprehensive. It's kind of all in one sitting where you can get this story from start to finish. Um, and I enjoyed it. I just really did. He, he really knows how to kind of do the basics of what I try to do on Brain Scratch, which is let you know what the popular story is, show you the information that makes that popular story, and then try to dissect that information and see if there's another theory that can come out of it. And the theory that he comes up with is very compelling. Uh, I got to admit, I actually jumped right into doing some research on my own just to see if there was any follow-up that happened, maybe as a result of this coming out. Um, but I haven't seen anything like that quite yet. But they really... It would just take checking a few things to um, either get his theory supported or dismissed. So I would be hopeful that if this film gets popular enough or gets seen by the right people, perhaps it could be one of those pretty rare pieces of art that actually influences the case. And if you guys have watched me on this show at all, you know that I think that is basically the home run for the type of content that I cover here. If it's a documentary that actually makes law enforcement look at something again or investigate something a different way, I think that is an amazing thing. And this could be one of those things. It might just need a little more time to grow. I'm really not sure. As of today, uh, at me looking at it, it looks like it has over 15,000 views. It could certainly use some more. So if you are a fan of Brain Scratch, if you already know Richard D. Hall from his work on the Madeline McCann case, um, please head over to his channel. I'll have it linked in the description box below and check this out for yourself. And Richard, if you happen to see this review somehow, just know you've got a very big fan in me. Um, I really love the way you go about these things and it's weird. I almost feel like we're brothers in some strange way because we're both kind of working in a similar manner to each other. Although I have to admit, you do a really good job of getting out there and getting your hands a bit dirtier where I'm a bit more about the information that could be sussed from the digital aspect of it. So a little bit of a different methodology, but 
I think we're brothers and that we're both looking for the truth and using our information, trying to share it with other people to gain more knowledge, which I think is a very, very cool place to be. So on a scale of one to 10, um, I would rate this uh, knowing that it is specifically a project for YouTube. I would rate it a seven and a half. Uh, like I said, just could be tweaked a little bit. Um, some of the narrative went on a little long, probably could have been condensed. That sometimes happens when you have editors that are the same people that are doing the writing and all the research. Sometimes we fall in love with our own words. Um, uh, like I said, maybe a little more music uh, woven into the start of it. Maybe some um, better shots, a little more scenery that could have been added into this. But in terms of a mystery, nails it. It is a very compelling mystery um, and the outcome will certainly leave you scratching your brain as I am right now already dying to get back to my computer and see if I can find some more research on this. So thank you so much for joining me here on Itchy Mysteries. I hope you're having a great week. Take care everyone and I'll see you on the next show on the Lord Narts channel.